Let's take a look at the microcontroller features that can remain powered during deep sleep. The real-time clock calendar can be configured to keep time during deep sleep. It can even continue to output a seconds clock signal during deep sleep. Other I.O. pins will maintain their state during deep sleep and throughout wake up until the deep sleep release bit is cleared. Deep sleep registers will retain data over deep sleep even though the rest of SRAM is powered off. If more data is needed, an application can use the table read-write features to save data to flash memory. On some devices, double EEPROM memory is also an option. The Deep Sleep Brownout Reset feature can be enabled to provide an indication of integrity for the special Deep Sleep and RTCC registers in case power levels drop too low for safe operation. In addition to these features, several different wake-up sources can be enabled to operate through Deep Sleep. Let's take a look at them. The most common wake-up sources available for deep sleep include Interrupt Zero, the Deep Sleep Watchdog Timer, a real-time clock calendar alarm, and ultra-low power wake-up. Of course, mClear Reset can also be used as a wake-up source. However, I.O. pin states will be lost upon wake-up instead of waiting for application firmware to clear the deep sleep release bit. A power-off, power-on sequence will also wake a device from deep sleep, but this will behave exactly like a traditional power-on reset. Data stored in special deep sleep registers will not be retained over a full power off, power on cycle, since VDD voltage is required to maintain these deep sleep registers. Like mClear reset, power off, power on cycling will not retain I.O. pin states. Waking from interrupt zero happens when an external interrupt edge is detected on the int zero pin. Int zero can be configured to be active high or active low. The example circuit shown is for an active high int zero pin. A push button is used to pull the int zero pin high briefly, while pull down resistor normally holds the pin at a low state. To reduce switch bounce sensitivity, a capacitor can be added to low pass filter the signal. The deep sleep watchdog timer provides another wake up source for deep sleep. It is not the same module as the software watchdog timer that you might be familiar with during active run mode. It is a separate module specific to deep sleep. The Deep Sleep Watchdog Timer requires a clock source to keep track of how long to stay in deep sleep. Two options are available, an internal low power RC oscillator or an external secondary oscillator. The Deep Sleep Watchdog Timer should always be run from the internal RC oscillator if robustness is needed, allowing an application to wake up even if a crystal failure has occurred. Configuration bits specify how long the device should stay in deep sleep before timing out and waking up the device. 16 different timeout settings are available. If more granularity is needed, a real-time clock calendar and alarm should be used instead. The real-time clock calendar can keep a running clock of the current date and time, plus it has an alarm feature that can be used to wake the microcontroller from deep sleep at a specified date time. Unlike the deep sleep watchdog timer, granularity is not restricted to 16 options. Any date time can be used. The internal low power RC oscillator or the secondary oscillator can be used for the clock source, just like the deep sleep watch time timer. If both the RTCC and the deep sleep watch time timer are going to be used, and robustness is not a key concern, the same clock source can be used so that power isn't wasted keeping two oscillator circuits running. During deep sleep, I.O. pins are generally held constant in their last configured state. However, the RTCC can be configured to output an alarm pulse or seconds clock output on the RTCC pin, even while the microcontroller is still in deep sleep. This pulse could be used to continuously blink an indicator on a clock readout, for example. The RTCC and deep sleep watchdog timer need a clock source to operate. When using the 31 kHz internal RC oscillator as a clock source, no external circuitry is required. For more timing accuracy, an external 32.768 kHz crystal can be connected to the microcontroller's secondary oscillator pins, as shown in the example circuit. To achieve low power consumption for deep sleep applications, the secondary oscillator has very low drive levels. The downside is increased sensitivity to rapidly changing signals in close proximity. Locate the crystal and capacitors as close to the microcontroller as possible, and avoid routing signals other than VSS and VDD near the oscillator circuit. The ultra-low power wake-up module, available on some deep sleep devices, 
allows your device to go into deep sleep for a certain period of time and wake up without using an oscillator. Because ultra-low power wake-up is clockless, it consumes less power than wake-up sources that need an oscillator. Instead, ultra-low power wake-up uses a slowly discharging capacitor voltage to triple wake-up after a period of time has passed. Let's look at how this works. Before entering deep sleep, firmware will configure RA0 as an output pin and drive it high to VDD. The I.O. pin will charge the capacitor to VDD voltage. Once the capacitor is charged, firmware will let the ultra-low power wake-up module take control of the RA0 pin, and deep sleep mode is entered. During deep sleep, the ultra-low power wake-up module will provide a small pull-down current to the pin, allowing the capacitor to slowly discharge over time. When the voltage of the capacitor finally drops to the I.O. pin's trip point, nominally one half volt, the device will wake up from deep sleep. Now let's take a look at how firmware can be written to work with deep sleep. When the microcontroller first powers on or wakes up from deep sleep, it will start executing code from the reset vector. If the RTCC is using the secondary oscillator to keep track of time, the secondary oscillator should be enabled before clearing the deep sleep release bit. This allows the RTCC to continue operating continuously without losing time. Deep sleep hardware will keep the RTCC and secondary oscillator running throughout deep sleep and wake up. Applications that aren't using the real-time clock can skip this step. Next, firmware can check the deep sleep wake up status flag to see if we are powering on for the first time, or if we are coming out of deep sleep. If coming out of deep sleep, firmware can read data from the deep sleep registers to determine which wake up source was triggered, and restore application context. Waking up from deep sleep causes a power on reset, which in turn resets most registers back to their power on default values. However, immediately applying these default settings could be undesirable in a deep sleep application. So, a special deep sleep feature prevents certain register changes from being applied during startup. Without this feature, IO pins would all revert to being tri stated, and the secondary oscillator would be disabled immediately on wake up. The end result would be losing track of time and losing control over external circuitry. Instead, application firmware has a chance after wake up to initialize values other than the power on defaults. Afterwards, firmware will manually clear the special deep sleep release state bit to allow register values to actively drive the hardware once again. At this point, application specific tasks can be carried out, such as reading new data and outputting resulting data. When the application is finished, it should save its context information, if any, out to the special deep sleep registers and or non-volatile memory. Finally, deep sleep is re-entered and the process can begin again when the next wake up event occurs.